I couldn't wait, fam. I couldn't wait. <laughs> as soon as I got the engineer, I had to show you the potential of this build, even though it hasn't exactly reached that full potential quite yet. But it's so powerful that you can literally see that the only way is up for this build. From the rings to the skills, I tell you that this build is broken and here's why. Now, if you're interested in builds from the challenger all the way to the hunter, then this is the place to be. So don't hesitate to like the video and subscribe for more content like this. Okay, first things first. There are many players who are still confused about when you're actually able to combine your archetypes. I actually thought you had to be further into the game, but you can do this as soon as you attain 10 levels on any trait. I made a video going into detail about this. I'll leave a link in the description below. But what I have here is the challenger engineer archetype combo build. But let me just say something because you're in for a treat. I have never, <laughs> mark my words, never made any build in any game with this kind of complexity. That being said, I hope I don't leave anything out because I want you to experience everything I have been for the last few hours. The purpose of this build is to be a damage dealing tank with the capability to support your team while dishing out insane melee damage as well. Now you want the challenger archetype first because you need his prime perk called Die Hard. As you know, we can only have one prime perk depending on which archetype is equipped as a primary. Die Hard is the way you want to go for this playstyle. But this is not the first build I'm going to do with the engineer. I'm going to have some that have the engineer as a primary so I can utilize that perk as well. But Die Hard gives you a second life that has a 10 minute cooldown. I can say with certainty that this comes in clutch every time. But this cool armor that you see right here is called Technician from the secret engineer archetype that you can find in their route with the treasure hunter perk from the wonder class you unlock from beating the game. Or you can have someone else who's already got the engineer help you get it. This set is considered heavy, but you can handle it because you have the strong back trait that comes with Challenger. You see, these two archetypes in particular are like a match made in heaven since both of them promote a tanky survival style of play because the main trait for engineer is called Fortify. This increases the armor's effectiveness up to a whopping 50% once it's leveled up all the way. I'm only halfway, but I could still feel it even with that. You see where I'm going with this, right? Now look at the skills for the challenger first, because the engineer skills synergize perfectly with them. At the moment I have two unlocked, War Stomp and Juggernaut. It's your choice what to use based on if you want to be more resilient or not. So you can switch depending on the situation. War Stomp is great for ad control and Juggernaut is for surviving impossible situations in which you can see here. But when looking at the engineer skills, all three are a different variation of a turret. And this speaks to my earlier point when I mentioned that there's never been any build with this type of complexity. Well, the engineer's turret functionality is complex to say the least, but so engaging. First of all, it deals a ton of damage, so it feels like you have another player auto-aiming for you, especially with this 20% skill damage buff for its passive perk. But when placing the turret down, you could either leave it there to do its dirty work, or detach it and use it as a Gatling gun. You can then put it back and let your friend in the party have a go at it. I've never seen this before in any game, man. And if you, let's say, leave it behind, you can summon it right back into your hands. And the same goes for if you're not using it. After placing it down, just double tap the button to put it on cooldown. Very versatile and easy to use while still being effective. I haven't even unlocked the other two, which are a flamethrower and an impact cannon. I can't wait to see what these do. But as you know, we have more traits besides the static ones that automatically level. I suggest investing in vigor, endurance, and expertise. All three are ingredients needed to dominate as a tank. But this is not all the build is, fam. I'm not too particularly fond of tank builds because they're typically slow and deal minimal damage. They're only utilized in most cases as deterrents so that the damage dealers do their thing. But let me tell you, this build is different because it's fast. In fact, nobody can beat me in a race or keep up with me. And it's because of this ring, which is called Heart of the Wolf. It increases stamina by 25%, which is always great, and movement speed by 10%. And that's not all, because I have another one called the Momentum Driver. And these rings stack, by the way. The description states that after sprinting for only two seconds, movement speed increases by 15% and stagger increases by one. So that's 25% movement speed out the gate. And remember, Juggernaut gives me another 15% movement speed 
with a 50% melee damage increase. Now I gotta tell you about which melee weapon I'm using, which is the Iron Greatsword, which you already know is a beast. I have a mod in it called Vengeful Strike. This increases the melee damage by 20% when below 50% max health. Now hold up fam, I haven't even got into the weapons, but I will in due time, so just bear with me a little bit longer. So it said that while below 50% max health, right? And I'm sure you're wondering why my health is always halfway while fighting. Well, that's for a reason, which is gonna blow your mind, actually. The secret sauce is within the amulet and rings. Check this out. The amulet is called the Vengeance Doll. It increases all damage dealt by 30% when the wearer's health is below 50%. You're beginning to see the pattern now, I'm sure. And of course, nobody wants their health halfway at all times. Well, in this case, you will. Because everything in this build is made to cater specifically to that perspective, starting with the Vengeful Doll Amulet. Then there comes the other three rings. The restriction cord makes it so that no matter what, my health will never exceed 50%, henceforth making all these buffs possible. But that's not all of them. Check this out. And this ring plays a huge part in why I can survive through all of this damage enemies deal to me. It's called the Reserve Boosting Gem. The description states that it increases health generation by 0.333 per second. After only one second going below 50% health, it increases the regeneration value to two until 50% health is reached. In a nutshell, this means that every time I take damage, my health will automatically and consistently begin to regenerate one second after. And I'm talking about regenerate really fast. No need to even use a dragon heart. But if you do decide to use one, you're better off using it before a big fight. Because the dragon heart I'm using is called the rune heart. This one increases health regeneration by five and generates 500 mod power over 10 seconds for both weapons. All of this together is why I'm able to survive that long while dealing that damage and maintaining the speed and mobility. Finally, for the weapons, I'm using the Bulldog Shotgun native to the Challenger with the Hotshot mod. This is a great weapon, especially for an engineer. And when enemies get close to your turret or get close to you, the stagger damage is great and you can just clear them out whenever you want, especially when the Hotshot mod is applied. Now for my secondary, I decided to switch it. Remember that video I made about the early game SMG that you can get? Well, the cube gun is so much better. It has infinite ammo and generates a cube around you that absorbs 500 damage from incoming enemy projectiles. This even <laughs> furthers the reason why this build is so effective. From every facet, it offers survivability and damage everywhere I look. And a lot of this stuff, like the rings and amulets, you can get from just playing the main story. There are a few items that I had to go and search for, but if you'd like me to help you out with that, then just let me know in the comments and I'll do the best I can. I didn't want to make this video too long by explaining how I got all this. In fact, you might have everything already. But do you see the synergy in this build? Do you see how powerful it is? The proof is in the pudding. I can't make this stuff up. And I literally cannot wait to see when this is in its final form. Please share anything you'd like to add in the comment section below. What archetype combo builds are you making? I know this one is a perfect match. Which other ones have a great synergy? I really like to know. But anyways, I think that's all I have to say about this. It's pretty late, I'm losing my voice. I know it's a little bit scratchy, but I was so excited. I just wanted to record right away and get this to you as fast as possible. So if it helped you out in any way, please drop a like and subscribe if you're new. I'd appreciate your support and I'd love to have you here. I'll see you in my next video. Be right out.